So a little while back, I was sitting there minding my own business when I get a pop-up from Steam. As none other than Project Melody herself had sent me a game with a little message to go alongside it. Let me just see if I can find it. Uh, there. Dear heart, I saw this had Lolly Dragon R Adventures. Enjoy. Best wishes, Mel. God fucking damn it. And so I sat there for a while, shocked and taken aback as I wondered just what kind of impression I'd made for her to think that any of that would be a selling point for me. And so in an effort to prove her wrong, I was determined to play through the entire thing from start to finish such that I could say with absolute certainty that I definitely didn't like it. However, much to my dismay, the game's really fucking good. <laughs> Last Evil is an innocent little dungeon crawler card game where you play as a succubus who delves into a randomly generated dungeon to fight monsters armed only with your wit and a deck of cards. The cards therein can then be used to either deal damage or defend yourself from it depending on what the situation calls for, all the while having random encounters and events which can either help or hamper you depending on how you approach them. And if you think any of that sounds familiar in regards to gameplay, ah, uh, no, it doesn't. What are you implying? That a, that a hentai game would steal its core gameplay loop from an already established title? That's, that's nonsense. Slay the Spire? I hardly even know her. <laughs> Where this game differs from the cheap knockoffs, however, isn't what happens should you fail. You see, if you die in the game, you die for Get a sex scene. Yeah, it's one of those games. But hold on a minute. Given that the dungeon's inhabitants' collectively most notable feature is having the words sex offender spelled out at the top of their resumes in big red wording, what could possibly compel us, a member of the fairer sex, to delve into a one-to-one -one reconstruction of the Blizzard campus in Irvine, California? Well, you see, many years ago, humans and monsters were at war. The battle raced on for ages, but eventually, the humans managed to capture the Archdemon, leader of the monsters, and seal them off in the bottom of a place known only as the dungeon. Without their leader, infighting broke out among the monsters, and the humans quickly dealt the finishing blow. This marked the start of a prosperous era, where the humans took control and created a perfect utopia where no man would ever want for anything. And all it took was a little bit of segregation and slavery on the side of the demons. Because as we all know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a zero-sum game. The more suffering one person goes through, the better life becomes for someone else. And what better way to determine who goes where on the pyramid than basing it on unchangeable physical attributes. After all, as the late visionary Martin Luther King once said, judge a man not by the content of his character, but by the color of his skin. What a guy. Truly what's to live by. <laughs> This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, not being too fond of the whole enslavement process, the monsters look for a way to strike back. However, without the guidance of their leader, they can't muster the forces to actually put up a meaningful fight against their human oppressors. And that's where you come in. A succubus set out to delve the dungeon and free the archdemon, under whose leadership the monsters might once again unite and have a fighting chance against the humans. And so to fight your way through the dungeon, you're introduced to what is without a doubt the best part of the game the combat. You're given a rather simplistic starting deck with pretty self-explanatory cards like deal damage, shield yourself, shield yourself but bigger, give an enemy sloppy toppy for three turns, or apply a damage debuff. After each battle, you're given the option to add another card to your deck, the quality of which varies from extremely busted to putting the card equivalent of a flaccid penis into your collection. To play the cards, you have to either spend mana or lust. Mana is pretty simple, it's restored at the start of each turn, is used for most basic abilities, and it's generally the main resource you spend to actually do anything. Lust, however, is a bit different. As a default, you get one lust every other turn, it can be carried over between battles, and a lot of the lust spells are exceptionally powerful, with the added bonus that you don't need to tap into your mana pool to actually use them. There is a downside though. You see, in this game, money isn't a thing. Instead, you pay for stuff with... Uh, essence. And extracting... Essence, after a fight, also has the side effect of entirely depleting your lust bar, as well as giving you a smut scene, introducing an extra element of decision making as for whether you'd like to keep the extra power from your lust for an upcoming fight, or gather more essence to potentially buy more upgrades later on, and choosing the right option at the right time can truly make or break your run. You are that right, giving head to the imprisoned werewolf is not a matter of lust or caving into carnal desire, it's the meta. But what about the sex scenes themselves, I hear you ask? Is the source worth the effort? <laughs> No, 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 it, it, it really is not. Uh, most of it reminds me more of Play-Doh figures being mashed together than actual sex scenes. That's not to say you can't find some enjoyment in them, however. A ton of scenes have been created, with diversity being the main goal, meaning that even if the quality itself is dubious, there is without a doubt going to be something in here which strikes your fancy, whatever that might entail. And oftentimes that lets you overlook some of the, uh uniqueness of the animation, but unless there's something calling to you specifically within a certain scene, I'd say most of them range from very mediocre to just 
kind of bad. I do appreciate how they added both a victory and defeat animation for each enemy, as it adds a bit of variety if you ever do find some you like. Personally, I am a big fan of the third miniboss doppelganger, who is effectively just a food and hour copy of your own character, and you're watching a YouTube video about a hentai game, so you're not allowed to judge me for it. But let's skip forward a bit. We've braved the entirety of the dungeon, and upon reaching the end of the third floor, we found none other than the Archdemon himself sitting on his throne. And he does not want to lead the demons. Having been beaten once, he sees no point in trying to fight the humans anymore, as nihilism has taken hold over the place as fighting spirit once resided. And so, as the spunky succubus with hope in her eyes, it now falls to us to refute his nihilistic worldview in the simplest way possible. By fucking killing him! It doesn't go so well. You see, the Archdemon still has control over all demons, us included, so we can neither damage him nor shield from his attacks, quickly ending in a loss and a game over. But like my stepfather, having become so hurt and angered at stopping his toe on the kitchen counter that he's now heroically and bravely beating the daylight out of my mother, we're not about to let a little bit of pain and hardship stop us from carrying out our mission. In fact, we'll use that pain to become stronger than ever before, to push past our limits and transcend what we previously thought possible to go beyond. He's giving it his all, even though he's injured. Those aren't just random punches either. They're targeted. And every single one of them... Shut the fuck up, woman! ...is more than a hundred percent of his power! As we now unlock Hard Mode, severing ties from the Archdemon to give us the ability to take him on in a fight, but also making us vastly weaker in the process, as we now, driven by revenge, fight our way through a much harder version of the dungeon. Not to convince him to lead the demons, but to take over his spot and do it ourselves. Now, unlike our previous attempts, we'll actually have to put thought into our build if we want to beat the Hard Mode, or alternatively, if you would just like to turn your fight with the Demon Lord into a euthanasia session for him instead, boy have I got the deck for you. First, reduce your deck size to 10 cards. Now, pick up Quick Shot. A free spell that deals 1 damage and draws you a card. Upgrade it so it doesn't disappear after the first use and now enter any fight. Keep drawing cards until your entire deck is in your hand and now use Quick Shot and watch as your free damage dealing spell draws itself only for you to repeat the process. Congratulations, you broke the game. You can now win every single battle before the enemy ever gets to take their turn. With the only minor caveat being that until you hit the power spike of literally infinite damage, you're using the starter deck, which is uh, bad. But get it together and I guarantee you will absolutely roll over any anything this game will throw at you. Yeah, basically, I just slapped her up and sent her back to the surface. I don't care what she had to say, no one is going to make me come back to leading the Hello, monster. Mr. Demon Lord. I'm an ordinary man from Denmark. I will fight you to the death, you motherfucker! I will meet you in the ring alone! The cancer has won. Last evil. Game is like $8 on Steam, and for what you get, I'd say it's definitely worth a shot. Completing the full thing will net you about 8 to 10 hours of gameplay, and despite the pawn itself by all means being very mediocre, it's still one of the more interesting smut games I've played in the last year. Even if it is just kind of a worse version of Slay the Spire. Take it from me, a guy who's yet to even buy that game on Steam, but I digress. And hey, even if after you buy it, you find that it just doesn't strike your fancy within the first hour or so, just take advantage of the two hour refund window on Steam. Literally no risk, but very likely, I think you'll find that this game's one that's been added to your Steam library to last. Evil. The last evil. Should you fap to? Last evil? Yes. Also, thanks for the game, Mel. <laughs>